All of us must have cut our skin accidentally in our life, having injuries that bleed and bruise. While being very common, they are not usually given much attention. But it may surprise you that being quick to bleed and bruise after a minor injury, spontaneous bleeding or bleeding for long periods of time after a cut might be an indication to a bleeding disorder. Yes, because all bleeding disorders are characterized by a tendency to bruise easily and they need a prompt medical attention. Before moving forward, I would like to clear the difference between bleeding and bruising. So, the bleeding also called hemorrhage is the term used to describe blood escaping from the blood vessels. This bleeding from the skin occurs if there is an injury to the skin surface and it may sometimes occur spontaneously. While a bruise, also known as ecchymosis or a contusion, occurs when capillaries under the skin bleed, while the overlying skin remains intact. The injury causes blood to leak and collect near the skin surface, causing bluish-black skin discoloration. So, now that you are familiar with these terms, let me tell you that if a patient visits your clinic with such complaint, what questions do you need to ask them? Well, firstly, you should ask them if they have fever, chills, headache, swollen lymph nodes, joint swelling, as that can be due to hemorrhosis or bleeding in joints, dark or bloody urine, black and tar-like bowel movements, jaundice or about the yellowing of skin, skin rashes, or infections. Now that you are clear about the symptoms of your patient, you should move towards the next question that is about the family history. Ask him if he or anyone in his family has experienced any of the conditions like liver disease, valvular heart disease, hemophilia, systemic lupus erythematosus, tendency towards easy bruising or excess bleeding at the time of birth or later, particularly during surgeries or dental work. Next, you should ask him about his medication history. If he's taking any steroid, diuretics, or warfarin, well, that is because these drugs might be the reason behind his bleeding and bruising. Now, after questioning the patient, next step is to carefully examine the patient. For that, you need to check the temperature first. Then listen to the heart with a stethoscope pushed on his abdomen. Check the joints for swelling. Thoroughly examine the skin for any bruises. Check the lymph nodes to see if they are enlarged. If your patient is going to have any elective or non-elective surgery, guide him to tell his surgeon about his bleeding or bruising tendency. Now, what do you think can cause a tendency to bruise or bleed excessively, and what is typical for each cause? Well, there can be two possible reasons for that. One can be the lack or poor function of substances in the blood that enables it to clot. The possible reason for that can be hereditary disease like hemophilia or medication use, such as warfarin and other anticoagulants, or liver disease may be. Well, the typical symptoms for that are the large superficial bruises and spontaneous bleeding. The other cause for tendency to bleed can be due to the lack or poor function of blood particles called platelets or fragile blood vessels. Well, that can be due to the medication use like that of diuretics and steroids, leukemia, diseases of the blood vessels or infections, like bacterial infections of the heart, and Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, which is a bacterial disease spread through the bite of an infected tick. Typical symptoms associated with this are small, superficial bruises, prolonged bleeding and spot-sized bleeding into the skin. Now, based on the diagnosis, you can manage your patient accordingly. That was all about the differential diagnosis of bleeding and bruising. Stay tuned to Skydia.com for more such precise and knowledge stuff videos.